series as well. Um, so I know a little more about uh, than the average Joe about uh, the combat and the armor um, and what you have to do to make sure you prevent yourself from getting sent to the hospital <laughs> to do those demonstrations. Oh, we don't know guys, anything about that, you know. Because <laughs> you guys really hit each other, too. Um, at the Hammond Castle video you guys did, uh, you and one of the other members were, like, full-on punching each other in the head. <laughs> Which, uh, kudos to you for willing, for willing to do that. Um, so, your armor... Uh, I don't think people know this. Um, for some of the people who attended the fairs that I've spoken with, I hear them say, uh, they, we have these inside jokes, like we're doing the medieval times done right. Um, is there a, a number of safety precautions that you guys go through uh, to help make that armor more secure? We, we use a lot of modern metals in the armor. Um, more, our armor tends to be thicker than the historically, the, the examples from, from back then. Um, the, a lot of the armor back then, they were, they were tempering the armor and making spring steel, but they weren't really sure how they were doing it. We have a lot more consistency with that. Uh, the, a lot of the armor that you see on our presenters that are that are fighting is either a, a stainless steel or it's a, a really thick mild steel or it's an actual heat treated spring steel or a heat treated steel. Um, that's just one of the styles uh, or one of the things that we do to make the armor stand up to the abuse. We also we we try to use uh, period correct undergarments underneath the armor, but then we will also fill in with little bits of padding or extra hidden plates uh, in areas that should not take a hit, uh, shall we say. And uh, we're using a lot of, like in my helmet, I have an actual concussion padding inside of that. And a lot of the, the, uh, the fighters are using concussion padding inside. It's a brand new product, works great, and they've tested it in football. And um, the majority of the hobby is now using that type of material. Um, but yeah, we, we, we also do not do, uh, some historical uh, European martial arts groups will use stabbing in their fighting styles um, because it was part of the fighting style. We don't do that for obvious reasons. Um, as Evie is so uh, accustomed to saying, the blood has to stay on the inside for some reason. Um, so we we don't stab, but a lot of the shots we do are hacking or slashing blows and such, more to spread out the energy of the shot. And uh, we also are really key on targeting. We Our fighters have to know how to in order to fight in our group, to be invited to fight with us, they have to know how to target with their weapon. They just can't wave their weapon around willy-nilly and uh, you know just go in and bash on their opponent. They need to know, okay, I can't hit my opponent here because they don't have armor here, or hey, this opponent has a broken rib, I can't hit them there, uh, although that has never happened. Um, but you have to be very careful uh, when you fight your opponent. Now, when you do the tournament style fighting, like happens in some of the sport leagues, because there is a growing sport league or several growing sport leagues for medieval style fighting, it's pretty much you're getting in there and you're getting in there for points and you are getting in there to be as aggressive as possible. Whereas we are fighting to show the technique, show the armor, show the weapons. So our uh, our presenters are a lot more cognizant of what and where they're targeting. And there's, so there's a lot of conversation that goes on both before the battle, don't hit here, this is injured, I don't have armor in this section, and during. You know, what everybody in the audience may not hear is they kind of check in with each other too. You know, one more round, are you good? How are we feeling? Uh, so there is a lot of communication and everybody has to be very open as to how you're doing 
and uh, if the level of combat is comfortable for them. We don't want anybody to do something that is uncomfortable uh, because as he said, blood has to stay on the inside. Uh, <laughs> I pay the insurance, we gotta keep that down. <laughs> we, we also have several layers in place for safety in our fight shows. Um, we talked about the fighters themselves in, you know, talking back and forth. We also have safety marshals, which are on the inside of the fight ring rope and they are constantly circling around the fighters, watching for any problems with the fighter armor or whatever armor malfunctions, also making sure that the fighter stays on the inside of the rope and doesn't end up in a patron's lap. As romantic as that sounds, it's <laughs> not always fun. But uh, they also will, they have the authority to call hold or stop and stop the fight. Us as the presenters or the MCs of the of the fight show, um, Evie is our primary presenter in the fight show, and she has overall authority when it comes to the fight show. She can stop the fight and stop and and that's it. Um, because she, I'm usually in armor, and I'm if I'm fighting, I can't watch out for what's going on. So she's always one talking to the crowd, but also watching what's going on. So she's another safety marshal, but she is the safety marshal. Lady Evie, the safety marshal. <laughs> and it doesn't always make the nights happy because I have been known to say, no, you are done fighting for today. Uh, and, and they don't always like to stop fighting. But or, or we're not going to allow you to fight for the day. Right. <laughs> and, and so we do keep their safety in mind first. That is for me, the, the most important thing. I, I will not put on a show. I will, you know, apologize to crowds before I will endanger any of my fighters. Yeah. We, we have been in, uh, or at least myself, have been in other groups where um, the safety level, shall we say, was not as high. And that's where I have received the majority of my injuries was in those other groups. That's where I have visited various hospitals and, and emergency rooms while in those other groups. I haven't thankfully had to visit an emergency room, knock on wood, since I've been in the Brotherhood. That's good. That's good. And I see also too um, in your group, you have, you really do have like a wide variety of people who are going to be combatants. So you have people who are going to be younger, you have people who are going to be older, and you also have people too of different uh, various skill levels. Um, people that are more of uh, like a novice to an amateur level of uh, skill. And then uh, people like yourself, and I can't remember the other gentleman's name uh, when I saw you at Hammond Castle last, uh, watching the two of you <laughs> go at it was pretty good because <laughs> of uh, your skill levels. Um, so, uh, as I always say with my mom, you know, they're good fighters when there's a lot of suspense and silence in between strikes. <laughs> um, and uh, was that also an aim in the Brotherhood? Yes. Um, the, as I mentioned, the, the fighters themselves, to be able to, to, to fight with us, we, you have to come in at, by an invite actually to present with us, not just in the fight ring, but to present with us, you have to come in, we have to invite you in, or you have to say, hey, I'm interested, and then show us, okay, what are you bringing to the, to the whole setup? What, what level of competence, what level of knowledge? Um, do you have enthusiasm? Uh, so forth. And so we want to try to show in the fight ring, we want to show, yeah, we want to get the novices in fighting so they get better. Uh, we want to bring, we want to show various types of armor uh, and talk about them because we do that during during our shows. Uh, but we want to make our novices better fighters by having them fight the better, the better fighters. Um, and then we want to show uh, a gamut. Uh, I guess our retinue of fighters is not what you would say is historically accurate to a degree, because we do have female fighters in the group. They didn't have them back then, but we have them now. 
And the one good thing about that is now we can have, because uh, let me take preface this with for years, Lady Evelyn and I would always get the question whenever we would do a, a school event or a public event where there are children, we'd always get the, the, the little child that would come up to us, mostly girls, that could girls be knights back then? And we would have to say, well, we're sorry, they, they weren't allowed to fight back then, but they do nowadays. And here we have some examples in our fight ring actually going toe to toe with the big boys and winning and just going crazy. And uh, so we really try to show our fighters are role models for the kids. Um, as you've seen at the end of our shows, they get out amongst the crowd, they talk with them, they take pictures, they give hugs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember there, there was one woman, I can't remember her name, but um, she was like on the ground wrestling with a couple of boys and they were like all over her. They were yep. excited that their parents were taking pictures. <laughs> yep, that was that was our our uh, our, fighter, our fighter Finn. Um, yeah, she she was awesome. We also know with the younger fighters, Brian and I aren't going to be able to do this forever. We want to keep this going. We're not just doing it for ourselves. We want to get the next generation involved, and to do that, you've got to start training early. Uh, we do have some newer members to the group who are just starting out. And as Brian talked about, you know, what are you bringing to the group? Uh, for some of our newer members, it's a lot of times just enthusiasm and the willingness to put in some time and effort to, to learn all of this. Um, and Brian, of course, did also, I have to say, an amazing job with a lot of the younger girls asking, can you be a fighter? He came up with a whole book of fighters around the world that are women so that they can see that it's not just here, it's not just our group, that it is a possibility in a number of different places. Awesome. And the two with like the, the new generations, because you guys are going to schools and you have younger people um, in the brotherhood. So are you fine? Because for me, I, I think playing Dungeons and Dragons is the reason why I'm even doing these interviews, <laughs> because I wanted to know like, well, how do we go from being a society that believed in magic and people could summon storms to you know where we're at today um and how accurate was this game and so um there's this amazing romanticism coming from the arthurian legends that era of storytelling it's you can draw the sword and the stone and you'll be the true leader if you are, if you have it. Um, and it means you're pure of heart. And uh, if you slay a dragon, you can get its treasure. Um, and so that drew me, and so that drew me into learning more about history. But like, are you finding when people come here and start getting involved with this, um, are you seeing that there's this like new fire, this new engagement and wanting to learn more about the actual history. Yeah, I, I would say that. Um, a good majority of the patrons that, that uh, swamp our display tent, they come in, they, oh, cool sword. I use that in this campaign in D&D &D or whatever. And then they finally get it in their hands. And it's like, you can see the light bulb go on or the light in their eyes waking up and they're like, oh, I could learn more about this. Or um, they, they've they always had an interest in history, but it's been just kindling in the background. And then you they see what we're doing and what some of the other groups are doing. And it's like, I can actually do this. That's kind of cool. Um, or they, they have started out um, in what's called LARPing, live action role play. And so it's Dungeons and Dragons, but out in the woods. And uh, they, they're they out there with foam swords beating each other up. And then they realize I can actually put on real armor and beat the crap out of my, my friends. Great. And so they get into it that way. So there's various different avenues, but you we are, yes, we are seeing a fire kindling in a lot of these people that was just smoldering before. It's it's lighting up as they come and 
come to the Ren Fairs, come to a lot of our other events, and they get to hold the weapons, get to see the fiber arts, get to see how the fiber arts is doing, uh, get to see the food being cooked, uh, the 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 boyer making the archer the the arrows and stuff like that and the the bows um they see all that stuff and it really clicks something in them clicks so are you finding that too like there's a benefit with people learning these skills like they're going ahead and they start and they learn and then they come back and they're like oh my god this is like i can do this now i'm very capable of this I think there's a benefit to learning anything new. Uh, it keeps life interesting for one. But so fighting is great exercise. The history of it is, is fascinating. It's always good to know where we came from, to see the parallels in today or you know, to recognize things that are occurring. Uh, for the, the non-fighting skills, again, useful in a variety of different ways uh, in daily life that you can make those sustain sustainable objects um, but the fighting also too gives a lot of confidence to people when they have done their first fight and they come out and they're like, that was great. And I'm still standing and I'm okay. There's a whole look in their eye. Like I can actually do this. I, I am not going to fall over, or get hurt. You know, I can, I can handle myself in a battle. And that, that gives a lot of confidence to people. Yeah, we see there are may, there are certain points in the the hobby where uh, you see a change in that person. Um, one, for instance, uh, my son Kyle, who was knighted this year. Um, prior to the knighting, when he was fighting, he was he was finding his footing, shall we say? And then, as soon as he was knighted by Lady Evelyn of all people. Uh, as Queen Catherine at the New Hampshire Renaissance Fair, um, that fight show, everybody in the group was standing around the fight ring watching him fight, and it was like night and day. He found, he, he suddenly grew into his persona. He became Sir Kyle, yeah. and it was just amazing. And his confidence level went through the roof. And part of that's because we don't just give away the title. It, it's Brian's son. He didn't just come into the group being Sir Kyle. You earn it. And so when you earn that title, you do. You get that change in atmosphere of, wow, I'm here now. And you could really see that in Kyle's battles this year. Yeah, you. Um, there are a lot. There is a couple of other organizations out there that uh, where you are constantly able to earn titles. And uh, it's all through your own hard work. And so we wanted to replicate that in a way, but so when we say Sir So-and-so or Dame So-and-so, they earned that title. Uh, when we say Lady So-and-so, they earned that title. And usually it's through their own efforts in the group and outside of the group. We, we look at the person themselves and, and see what type of person they are. And they're like, okay, they're deserving of it. But when, when it comes down to our fighters, uh, earning the Sir designation, the fighters themselves actually group together without that person around. And we decide, does that person really deserve the title? And so it's by unanimous decision that they are, are given that title. It's not just myself or Lady Evelyn deciding, yeah, you know what? Yeah, we're gonna call them X, Y, Z or whatever. But uh, it's the group themselves voting on that, that title. Awesome. Nice. I had to earn it like back in the day. <laughs> yeah, Kyle actually started training when he was about uh, one and a half, carrying around a sword. And he was a squire. He was a page and then a squire and moved up through the ranks. And for the longest time, once he turned 18 uh, until this year, he was man-at-arms Kyle and fighting as a man-at-arms and doing all this stuff, uh, not just in the group, but outside in the real world. And we all decided, you know what? It's about time. He has definitely earned it. Nice. Yeah. Now, there are, there are fighters that come into the group that have already, they've already accomplished stuff. So we give them the title of Sir. Uh, right off the bat, or dame right off the bat. If they're a female fighter or a male fighter, they have those two designations. 
All right. All right. And so I'll ask you both a uh, final question. Do you have anything, uh, messages for future generations? I would say that for me, it's to just realize you can do things, right? So if you came to me 20 years ago and said, you're going to help run a 15th century reenactment group that puts on fight shows, I would have laughed. I would have said, I can't do that, you know, get in front of crowds or do battles or, uh, you know, I, I won't be able to dress up in 15th century clothing. That's, that's, that's crazy. Um, realize that anything you really would like to try, it's out there and there are ways to do it. And you've really just got to kind of find it. And when you do, you find those people that, that you know have similar interests like you it becomes kind of nice yeah exactly like what uh Evelyn said is um find what 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 fires you and do it um and and learn about everything that you want to learn about don't let anyone else stop you from learning and continuing to learn uh because we're always learning we'll be learning till the day we die um but you learn what you want to learn and uh you know just go for it um back to what evelyn said um talking about talking in front of people there are a lot of people out there who are afraid of public speaking and i am actually one of them i have <laughs> stage fright and so in order for me to get up on that stage or in that fight ring to talk to those hundreds or thousands of people that are standing around the fight ring. And believe me, there are a large amount of people in front of those our shows. I actually have to get into the Sir Brian persona and take on that as sort of, the Sir Brian persona is more of a mental armor as opposed to the armor that I actually wear. Um, so if you have uh, a fear of something find a way to conquer it if you can, because that is going to help you uh, go through life, be more confident uh, with, with how you are as a person. All right, thank you both. You're welcome. Thank you.